Welcome to Book and Lounge. I'm your host, Jacqueline. In this episode, we are discussing Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson, which was winner of the Costa First Novel Award 2021. It's a story about two young Londoners, both British, both black, and both artists. He is a photographer and she is a dancer, and both are in love and trying to navigate life in a city that celebrates and rejects them. I'm joined by Katrina, Taiwo, and Annette to discuss the book. Let's hear what they had to say. Open Water. I just wanted to start off, I guess, uh, exploring the themes that came out from the book. And I just might ask each one of you which theme you think stood out the most for you. I think for me, it wasn't the, the issue of the relationship, the budding relationship between the young man and young woman. It was more to do with the interior life of the young man and the fact that he was more than just a black body. It was about the fact that he was very artistic. So he's a creative person and how he felt his creativity was being stifled or crushed and how he was reacting to that. Yeah, that, that was the thing for me. I'll come back to the creativity being stifled. Any other themes that stood out for you, Annette or Katrina? Well, for me, the overriding sense I had of it, especially when I first read it, was just not the themes, just this poetic language all the time. But reflecting, it seems to me that he just, as a character, he's so hesitant and unsure. And then it's only, you know, at the end of the book that you begin to understand what's impeding him all the time with his, you know, the concerns about the police and the issues for black people, young black men particularly, in that part of London. Okay. So, Annette, anything else stand out for you? Probably actually similar to what Katrina said, um, like vulnerability and like all all across the the book within the relationship and also just how I felt he he constantly felt very, very vulnerable as well. Sometimes I felt like he was sure of himself, but then he wasn't at the same time. Yeah, vulnerability and, and I guess, yeah, just my masculinity. Yeah, I agree with you guys there. For me, what stood out the most was just what it's like to be in the head of a young black guy growing up. The constant awareness, you have to constantly be aware of your surroundings, of how you're being perceived by others. And that unease and not being able to be yourself when you're outside of your safe environment, of your home or in close spaces with your friends and your family. I think that that's what stood out the most. And as you've all said, the love story part of it, yes, it was there and it took up a lot of the story, but yeah, it, I just didn't feel like there was a, a theme there. So what did you guys think about the love story element? It was there, but for me, it kind of got in the way of what I was more interested in. Like what you said, Jackie, just being in the mind of a young black man in South London, that again only really came towards the end and I was like oh where's this been like I know it was kind of there but he was kind of wrapped around this girl and I don't care like I wanted to know more about (laughs) you know what more is going on why do you feel this way and it only kind of came towards the end and then I was like ah so for me yeah it was a part of what was going on in his life but I just didn't care that much and I think there was so much more going on and I would have rather have read more and understood more about that than than this girl because it just it dragged a little bit. Do you think it was a bit self-indulgent in that respect, the relationship part of it? Do you think that that part of it was just a bit self-indulgent on the author's part? I don't know because I don't know what I because I don't know what he was going for. I'm not sure if it was meant to be a love story. Then fair enough. So I don't know if necessarily it was maybe self-indulgent. That's if that was the, the aim of the book or whatever it was. Then then fine. But yeah, I can't say because if it's meant to be a love story, then fine. I just didn't feel anything for the love story and that's just my that's just my opinion so yeah yeah because the love story I mean it never really happened did it it you you know if you if you factor in the amount of time she must have been in Dublin and the length of time it took them to sort of agree that they were in a relationship and not just good friends 
And then it was finished, really. And then, like you're all saying, it, it got interesting when you started realising some of the issues that were going on in his head and perhaps why he was so hesitant with everything or just the these sort of feelings. But because you could have said it was about somebody's difficulties in opening up into a relationship. But if that was because of all the other things that were going on, it's very much for the reader to interpret it that way, isn't it? There's no real link that was clear to me anyway. Mm -hmm. But I don't see why it has to be a love story or something else. I don't see why it can't be both a love story and a story of male masculinity and a story about fear because the theme of fear seemed to run through it, that kind of hypervigilance, wasn't it, where he's always being aware of his surroundings and the fact that he's in a black body, which must be quite exhausting. I liked the fact that it was very slow. But it was was slow and long during its slow bits. I think that it could have been a bit short, (laughs) maybe. (laughs) It just took too long to get to will they or will they not. And you see, for me, it, it felt like a book that wasn't going anywhere. Because it was describing the same thing. Yes, they met up. They went and did this. Yes, they met up. They went to a jazz cafe. Yes, they met up. They they got a takeaway. Yes, they met up. They spend the night in a, in bed again. Isn't that real it's, life, though? Isn't that how life is? It was the same it's thing. It's like a meandering journey. It's not... I don't want to read about real life and how boring real life is. <laughs> I'm escaping. Because for me, for the longest time, I thought it was just because she was still with her boyfriend, his friend. Then when I found out that they're broken up, I was like, huh? So what have I even been, like, how long have you been broken up? Why have I been reading all of this? Have you been broken up so long that I was annoyed because I, I thought they were still together? <laughs> I found out they weren't together. I just thought, then what has taken you so long? And then it still took even longer. So it was odd. Because she's in uni. He's, he's of an age to be in uni. So they're both very early 20s, maybe. Yeah. And so it's like they're making sense of life. So how many average 18 to 20 year olds actually reflect on life and try and make sense of their The point I'm making is that a lot of making sense of life doesn't mean that you necessarily (laughs) vocalise that you're trying to make sense of life or recognise that you're trying to make sense of life at the time. Maybe in retrospect you will, but at the time, you know, it's four starts, you're moving forward, one step forward, two steps backwards, another step forward, you know, that kind of thing. You're you're making mistakes as you're going along the way. You, You don't necessarily know where you're going, but you know you need to get somewhere. And, and so that whole meandering nature of it is what I liked, where it's almost as if to say the romance element or the relationship element between the, the man and the woman is a side dish. It's not the main dish for me anyway. But it took up so much of the story. Yeah. That's the, that's the, for me, that was the problem. I, I, if it was, you know, the side dish and it was, you know, on the periphery, I would understand. But I think for me, it was the centre of the story for the most of it. It was the main dish. But he couldn't really bring himself to... It's like it constantly occupied him. He kept talking about being in a fever and... Yeah, like he couldn't cope with what would happen if he went full into this relationship. But then then at the end, you've got all the aspects about, like, the fear he's living in, as you said, Taiwo and that, which you could connect the two, but I just think it wasn't... It wasn't connected in a way that became clear to me. I think it was meant to be a love story and then it goes off into being something else. A tragedy. A failed love story. As Taiwo, you mentioned something about it being about black creativity and it being stifled. And I'm just curious to know how you felt. I felt he couldn't be himself fully. It felt like he always had to run uphill and struggle against you know, currents that were pushing him downstream, as it were, because the society in which he lives is seen as something that he isn't necessarily, that he isn't necessarily, you know, he's seen as this black body, but he's more than just a black body. And so there's that struggle to express himself fully and be seen rather than be looked at. I I felt that's why he was feeling as if he couldn't fully express himself. He couldn't fully realise his full potential. He felt as if people weren't necessarily against him, but weren't necessarily for him either. Society that yes. they, they found himself in, yeah. Yeah, because I was thinking, I, I sort of thought differently. I read it differently. When he was taking pictures, 
that is when he was in his element. That is when he could be creative. He could work the camera into and then take the kind of images that he wanted. I thought more that he was it was when he was most relaxed when he was listening to the mute to his music and when he was taking pictures. But when he was taking pictures, because he's behind the lens, so he's like the camera is in front of him. He's behind it. It's almost as if the cam the camera being an extension of him is also a form of protection. You're looking through the lens. You're separate from the world. You're almost in your own little bubble, and so you can be. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and that's how I saw it. You can be. He can be who he is with with the camera and just you know taking pictures without having to worry about what the world thinks. When you're in the barber that's shop with your mates, when you're in the takeaway place, or you're in a club with your friends, you can't always be in the barber shop or the takeaway place. You can't always be in your safe space. But you can't be in your safe space all the time. You can't be creative all the time. Yeah. And now the book is written in a second person narrative. What did you think about that? It all just went over my head. I just read it as a novel, enjoyed it, and it wasn't until having read it that I realised a lot of people on Goodreads and other places seem to be talking. Well, not not really on Goodreads. It was another place. They were really emphasising this fact that the author had written in the second person, and it, and it seemed to mean something, but it seemed to have just gone over my head. So I can't really comment on that. Interesting. The first, at the beginning, I had, I sort of, I did reread it to sort of check what I was understanding and how he was doing it. But within quite a short space of time, I didn't really notice it. I don't know if it added. Some people seem to think it added, but I, I just wanted to get on with the story that wasn't getting on. How about you, Annette? Yeah, like, again, I think same as Coutinho. I read the first the first part and um, the first few pages and I think I had to reread. And I think at the beginning, I also probably got confused as to who was saying what. But then eventually you got used to it. And as I got to know the characters quite well, if, again, I, I found sometimes I've got myself a bit confused because I, I felt like i known them a bit better. I was able to go, oh, I, he probably said this. She was the one maybe saying that. Then I didn't really think about it that much. So maybe it was saying something, but I like, <laughs> just wanted to read the book. So <laughs> I just, yeah, I carried on with it. It's it's different. I liked it, but yeah, I didn't think too deeply into it. I, when I like second person narrative anyway, because I think it, writing in second person narrative is not easy. So I, I, I quite enjoyed reading it. And I, the reason why I liked it is because it kind, of, it kind of, because it's saying you, right? It makes you, it puts you in the story, you the reader in the story. And so what he's going through, well, I internalized some of what he was going through as well, especially towards the, you know, to the, towards the end and the last 30 or so pages. And I could really empathize with him. And I think part of that is because he was saying you and referring to the character as you. So I, I yeah, I, I really like the fact that it, it was in second person narrative. It's not Which is very much what a particular very person's much. blog was saying. And this person is a a reviewer. I guess she's a professional reviewer, so she has a following of uh -huh. people. And they're having this long discussion about it's a real coup that he was able to pull off the feat of writing in the second person in this lyrical way. I'd read it. I had no idea really what they were talking about. And I thought, am I such a philistine that this all just gone over my head? <laughs> I read it. I just enjoyed it. It's just like, for me, it's just a straight novel. But they were really getting into the whole, you know, how was he able to do it? He was able to achieve yeah. this great feat and all the rest of it. So... I think your comments give me a little bit more of an insight into why they were saying about the, the book being so lyrical and it being such an achievement as a first novel as well. But for me, as I said before, it just seemed to kind of just go over my head. I just read it straight mm. and enjoyed it. And how about the, the fact that South London features quite a lot in the book? So he was describing quite a few places in South London. I'm, I'm not familiar at all with South London. And did it really have any impact the fact that well i don't know where, actually whether you guys are familiar with those areas um, at all and and also did you learn anything new about london and living in london from reading it no not at all no? the things that i didn't know or uh, the sort of things he was doing which would be unfamiliar to me i just took that because he's a very young person and i'm not that age group anymore I didn't take it to be anything to do with where he was in London at either of you South Londoners I think like because I used to live there but it was over 10 years ago so 
what I know of it is not what I was reading. So I was like, oh, this sounds nice. It just wasn't the same as when I was there. Uh-huh. I guess it didn't. If I was from South London. Um, and even if I lived there, I'd probably think, oh, wow, like this is great, especially if I was from that particular area. I'm not from there, but it's still nice to read a different. It's sometimes I've don't always read books where in the, they're based in a specific particular area. Yeah, it didn't, yeah. Really, it didn't make much of a difference to me. It was nice to read, but that's all. I'm not familiar with the area, but it didn't put me off at all. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I like the way when he was describing the takeaway shops, the Jamaican That's never takeaway. happened to me. Sorry. That's the one thing that got me a bit. I was like, huh? Like when um, he just got the free food from the Caribbean takeaway. <laughs> what, maybe does this happen as well? Because that's never happened to me at all. No. I didn't know if I found that realistic. But again, maybe it's just because I'm not from that area. It could happen, but it's never happened to me. Yeah. What resonated with me was the bit where there's a little bit where he's talking to the girlfriend about what sort of takeaway they're going to get and yeah. he says something like Caribbean and and then like they're going to let them down so we get something more reliable and uh, that made me laugh because that is exactly what yeah. our problem around here is. I thought oh okay. Yes, I know this, so much I about know London bit. being a, maybe a third character it wasn't Can that I way. Work? I mean, I know he touched on London, maybe almost quite intimately, or, or South East London, although I'm not familiar with the area. And he didn't really touch on Dublin at all, apart from yeah. the word Dublin, you know, she goes to Dublin, goes to uni, and that's it. He doesn't really go to Dublin, so he doesn't take us to Dublin. But, oh yeah, he goes, doesn't he? He goes to visit her. He does go to Dublin. But I didn't twice. feel that London came across. I mean, I was interested yeah. when Isaac at the meetup was saying that he was actually reading the book on the station where the you know that was being described yeah i thought that must be quite he was describing quite experiential in some ways because it's almost as to say you're in the book itself yes yeah and, and especially if it's written in second person narrative yes. rather than london being a third character it was more to do with the nature of his life as in that kind of what's the word is it cultural capital because of the way he lives his life you know so much about parties barbershops, takeaways, Ubers, meeting. He's a young man. Yeah. He's a young man. I've I've been a young man and that wasn't my life. Oh, but that's your age, (laughs) Taiwo, because (laughs) I I look at my, my kids aren't even as young as him, but I can sort of see them relating more to, you know, this thing of just getting an Uber here and there. And that's exactly what they do. So to me, the things I don't do is just because I'm I'm not that age that that age anymore. And but what you said, um, Annette, about the the amount he's spending, it not that it's meant to be that fantastic amount, but it gave me the impression that although he, he, you know Taiwo, you said he's not expressing himself fully in whatever he's doing, he still seems to be successful enough. You know, he doesn't seem to be having any big problems you know with his daily life on account of money that just certainly didn't come across to me yeah it just seems like a, i don't know it's a, a different kind of life. lifestyle yeah. maybe, maybe my lifestyle <laughs> when i was his age was very sheltered i think it probably was yeah and, and he don't we not we let me forget he was actually still living at home so he didn't true. have rent and you don't even know whether the parents required him to pay any, towards it towards any of the bills yeah. But that's again, that's quite typical, isn't it, of younger people today who tend to struggle to get out of the family home, if they're lucky enough to have one anyway, um, because of the, the cost of, you know, buying and so on and living at home, but then spending all, oh, I related to all that very well, but not as a, not as somebody all of that, that age, somebody toast, who's isn't it? That's observes what it, is. it. Don't knock it. Yeah, it's interesting how people people quite want to have avocado and toast, but at the same time, they're like, oh, the environment, oh, the environment, forgetting where avocado comes from. Anyway, that's a, that's a completely different subject. <laughs> One thing that I wanted to bring up is this constant referral of other writers, musicians, music, films in the book. I mean, it is constant. I'm going to say that for me, it was just like a source of reference. Okay. Because I did, I wrote down quite a lot. And before I return the book to the library, I'm going to write down more. So I'm kind of flicking through the book, taking all these notes, 
checking out all these artists, these pieces of music, these photographs and other things, and thinking this is opening a door for me. It's almost like exposing me to other influences. I mean, you know, there's the obvious ones like Zadie Smith and, you know, Isley Brothers and all the rest of it, but there are many things that I didn't know about. So for me, it was helpful. I can understand how for many people it was quite irritating. And I really do understand the really good point that Isaac made about the fact that if you can't say it without making reference to these other creatives, then don't say it at all, which I wouldn't have even thought of myself. But for me, it was helpful because it, it's almost like educating you, if, you, if you're really interested, that is, in other things. So for me, it worked. Okay, so uh, let me wait to see, before I come back to you, I'll hear what other, the other, others think. I mean, what I liked about the book was the the, the poeticness of it. But mm -hmm. if it was a book where I'd really enjoyed the story and, you know, I was really, really into it, then I would do what you're saying, Taiwa. I'd go back and I'd be checking all of those references to find out what they add to the book. But I am I just skipped them. I, I think there was one piece of music I listened to and I can't remember uh, what it was. But I just sort of skipped them because I wanted to know what was going to happen in this story. It, it, and But if I'd come to the end of it and then I'd really sort of thought, yeah, this book, I, I love it so much. I'm going to go back and check all those things. I might check them a bit now after you've said that, Taiwo, or you'll give me a conscience. I should be opening myself up. I think I'll make a few notes and ask my son whether he knows them or not. But no, I, it, it, I just I just let them wash over me, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I just carried on the reading. And How about you, Annette? So probably a lot of what Katrina said and also a bit of what Taiwo said, Isaac said as well. Um, so I don't know how to write this. I guess I was quite familiar with a lot of the references that he made. There were some that I didn't know, but then like Katrina said, I wasn't that invested that I felt like I had to stop and look into it. I figured, because I kind of already know who he's spoken about, I'm going to assume that these people are similar. I also didn't know if it came off a bit pretentious, in a way, to, I, I mean, you know, I like music and art and things, but I don't know if I, like, throw it I mean obviously it's going through it's like a stream of consciousness but I don't know if he's one of those people that just also throws these names up in conversation and sometimes that can be a bit off-putting to people it just seemed like oh I'm just going to say I know this person and that person this artist and, this, and it just came off a bit pretentious to me and then also I just knew most some of the people that he was talking about so it's like a, it's a range of three different things I wasn't that invested it came off a little bit pretentious and you know if you if you have to keep making references, then maybe just don't say anything at all. And then I was just kind of knew who he was speaking about. A lot of different things going on in my head, but I didn't bother to look them up. That's what I basically what I wanted to say. So yeah, <laughs> yeah I totally agree with you on that because I think when I finished reading this, I was like, okay, so you know, you you're very well read. You listen to cool music. Mm -hmm. You know all these authors. You've read all these essays. So what? So have a lot of other people. <laughs> just like yeah, I just thought it was a bit of too much name dropping. Yeah, and then I kept thinking, I never felt that deeply about this. Should I be thinking that deeply about this? So, like, it's just, it made me think I'm not, yeah, like I haven't maybe intellectually thought about certain stuff more. Yeah. Just... And the, the other thing as well, it, it made, for me, it also made the, the novel come across more as essays or commentary rather than a novel. So, well, because, I mean, this is what I would expect. These are the kind of things I would expect if I was reading an essay, not a story. And I was quite irritated by them. I did recognize some of them. Some of them I didn't. And like you, Annette, I didn't bother looking anything up. It's like, yeah, okay, fine, I'll move on. And and, and also, actually, what I what I did find, because some of the films he described, I, I've not watched. I'm not much of a big film person. And also even some of the essays that he's referenced, I've not read them. And so I felt that, well, I don't know what you're describing here, but am I invested enough to actually go and look it up? to mm. see what it is that you want to say. And I do agree, if you, as a writer, can't use your own words to express a sentiment or an emotion, then don't. What's if, if you do it once in a while, fine. But constantly, I think it's, it's a bit of overkill. But what it conveyed to me was that this is a group of people who are very, I assume his friends to be like himself, you know, they're they're very arty, they're very 
into all this kind of thing and they live in that kind of world where mm -hmm. people do talk about essays and I just took it like that, that it was giving me a picture of the kind of social group that he's with. And I didn't feel I needed to bore down into the detail of it that much because I, you know, I mean, no, I, I didn't need to know any more than, than that, that they're the yeah. sort of people who spend their time dwelling on, on you know, they've... Because I felt like, I mean, he's a public school boy. He seemed, to, is it, I think, anyway, private school, not yeah, public yeah. school, private, yeah. private educated boy who seems to be, you know, the, as successful as you'd expect to be at his age in a career, who's got the leisure to be very kind of self-indulgent about his feelings. That's how the book went along for a long time for me. But then you get this bit at the end where you suddenly realise why he is so sort of introverted and, and constrained about everything and, and, and so bottled up. Um, so, the, so you sort of get a change of step, don't you, towards the end of the book? Do you, you think that it, that change came a little bit too late in the book to make it? Probably, because it could have been explored more, couldn't it? And maybe tied to, that's what I feel, it could have been tied in with his hesitancy in the relationships and stuff like that. Because after all, if you step out of your door every day thinking you might be flattened by a policeman, there's not much point in getting involved in a relationship, is there? Or trying to yeah. maybe develop that relationship into a more, although perhaps they were a bit too young for that anyway. But yeah, maybe it makes you feel like the you're not invested in a future. You just drift around and think about all these things. I, I, I do agree. I think he, he's traumatised. And he, from what we find out, in the end, he's actually been traumatized from a very young age by his experiences and what he's seen and what he's gone through. But because there's so much focus on him and the girl at the beginning, you don't get that. And so you don't understand mm -hmm. why he's behaving in, in a certain way, why there's that has why he cries so much. Mm -hmm. gracious. So you, you don't understand. And um, I said the, the, the crying for me was way too much. And at points I just felt like, you know, grabbing him and shaking him and telling him black men have been going through this for decades. You're not the first. <laughs> just, you know, get on with it. I felt that as if, if, if the, the trauma, the explanation about the trauma had come in a bit earlier, I think I would have understood him a little better and perhaps I would have had a bit more patience with him. It was only until the end that, yeah, I, be I began to understand and I began to empathise with him. I think it was. I think it was like a build-up because he did keep, the author did keep dropping in um, his fears with the police or hints of his mm. relationship with the police and his experiences with the police. So I think it was like a slow, it was supposed to be a slow build-up, but I think... The I mean, to me, I didn't, I didn't mind it, even though it came as maybe a late yeah. revelation. It was more to, to do with the fact that, I mean, they both went to private school. It both left mm -hmm. an imprint on them. The, the whole cultural reference bits where, yeah, it wasn't overkill, it was a bit showy, and it made me question, would he know so much? Would his cultural references that influence his photography be so well-formed and informed? But I didn't like the fact that he was a photographer and she was a dancer. I mean, it would have been just as bad if he'd been, I don't know, maybe some kind of professional sportsman or something. Because the whole issue is about the black body, isn't it? So I'm thinking, why does she have to be a dancer? Why can't she be more creative with yeah. the mind rather than with the body? In the same way that he is more creative with his mind than with his body. But she is studying English literature. So it's not as if, you know, uh, dancing is going to be career. Yeah, profession. She is studying English literature. And I mean, she does describe why she likes dance. But I mean, I, I do get you. We are we normally either sportsmen or music or entertain in some form of entertainment. But also, the, what kind of dance did she do? That's not well 
it's not described and would your view be different if she was a ballet dancer for example compared to i don't know what other dancers are there like interpretive i don't know i kind of got the idea that she wasn't like a hip-hop well, dancer. Modern. the issue of being seen and not seen comes up a lot in the book and i just wanted to, just to talk a little bit around that this this whole idea about how you're seen depending on who's being who's doing the seeing like Perpetual silence, having similar experiences, <laughs> although I think they, they both went to single sex private schools, if I'm not mistaken. No, I think he co-ed? did not want to go to a single sex school. He was, he did apply and I think he got into oh, okay. single sex school. In fact, I think it was Dalich College. An extreme minority. Yeah. And the expectation that they would maybe, I don't know, win trophies in sports or mm-hmm. whatever it was for the school. Yes, yeah, so there was that difference, wasn't there? Looking and and being seen. Well, yeah, because I think what what came out, oh, well, for me, especially towards the, towards the end, this whole the 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 idea, the whole the theme of being seen is that when he's in his private space, he's seen in a different way compared to when he steps outside his door. When the police see him, all they see is his black body. They don't see the person that's the human that's inside. It's just he's a black man, so he's probably done this or he's probably going to do that. There's no effort to actually see him for who he is. And that's different to how she sees him, for example. She sees the humanity. She sees the person that he is. And I think the main character, he's very conscious about this whole thing about being seen and how we 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 as black people are seen and how really it's mainly our color that's seen rather than anything else especially if you think about that the episode in the barber shop where the the customers and the barber are more afraid of the police um rather than the youth who are outside yeah. and the violence that I uh, was going on outside. They're more because of how they'll be seen the by the police coming in. Oh, well, the police, all the police are going to be seeing is black people, and then automatically assuming that they're all guilty, whether or not you've done something, you're automatically guilty. And I think for me, that was a running theme in the book. I remember I, there's also that episode where he's in Dublin and he's they're walking down the street and he's got his hood on, and then he spots a police person, and then he automatically t- takes it off. And then he's completely at unease after that. That when she was, uh, she he was quite, he was acting quite strangely the rest of the day. She was asking what was wrong, and he wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, He he can't learn though, isn't it? I mean, so yeah, he's met he, this young woman who, as far as we can tell, she seems to see him. So she's seeing beyond the outer to the inner person, the kernel within him, who he really is. Now I would have thought that. It's not simply because she's shared certain experiences as a black body to him that she's able to see him. She's able to see him to a large extent, I would have thought, because of who she is. And I would have thought that it's not an everyday occurrence for him to be seen in that way. And yet, what I found in some ways, well, it's a, it's a book, isn't it? It's, it's a piece of fiction. So I was kind of engaged emotionally. But I, I found a, an element of frustration in that if you meet this special person who is able to actually see you, why would you then dash this burgeoning relationship? I'm not saying you're going to get married necessarily, but yeah. surely you should be able to maintain some semblance of friendship. You wouldn't push the person away for, I don't know, for what reason. It just seems to be a, almost like a total rejection of someone that is quite special to you because she's actually seen you and it's not every day that you are seen. And yet you can... But is that not... Is that part of the trauma that he's experienced? He is unable to form relationships. He's unable to allow people close to him therapy, because yeah. of the trauma that, that he's experienced. He needs therapy, but they got so they actually got quite close. So that's what actually upset me more. They got really close, and then he just like if he'd just done that, and they when they were still I don't know what, then fine. But they got really really close for him to just. Like yeah, just dash her aside. I was he did he needs therapy, but I was just so confused. I was just I kept thinking, where are you gonna meet someone like this again? Where are you gonna find someone that sees you 
your soulmate, yeah. basically. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But he, he he didn't have the courage, really, did he, to go forward in the relationship? I think that's what is. It was possible, but but they're very young, aren't they? And and he draws back, and then he can't can't reconnect or. I, I got a bit confused in the very last pages, actually, as to at what point in time the last bit was meant to be. Wasn't it six months later? I thought it was uh, six months later. Where did, he... did it imply then that they were not not together in a relationship, but they were sitting down together at the end? So, yeah, so he, he'd gone to see her and then... Yes finally going to give her an explanation mm -hmm. as to why he did what he did that's what i thought i wasn't entirely sure so maybe you can say you know he's he's coming to terms with what he should have done that book you recommended mm -hmm. annette mm -hmm. the secret lives of church ladies there's there's a story in it it's a, it's a collection of short stories really good and there's a there's a story called how to love a physicist yeah and it's about a man and a woman that meet and because of things that have gone on in her in her life even though they really get on so well they meet at a conference an educational conference even though they get on so well she cuts him off even though they've been getting on so well and he perseveres now they're both older individuals than this young couple so I think there's that whole issue of maturity, you know, kind of being more comfortable and growing into your skin. Young man and woman in open water lack. Although obviously she seems to be more mature than him or maybe she's just not as damaged as he is. But it reminded me very much of the whole story. Yeah, I think, I th I think you hit the nail on the head there. I don't think that... Black girls do go through the same fear and, and so on, but not to the same level as black boys. As a black woman think touch wood i am yet to be stopped by the police although i have done most of my growing up here my brother when he was younger he was constantly harassed um, by the police all the time um, my brother is not the kind of person that used to get into any, any form of trouble so i think that she's more wholesome i guess and so hasn't been as traumatized as he is by her experiences with society in general. And, and then black women are not seen as much as, as a threat as black men are. As a black man, you're constantly seen as a threat by women, by men. Whereas I don't think there are any men out there who go around think, finding that black women are a threat. I also think she just comes across as a very good communicator in general. Um, women generally are. In her nature, she just seems like she's able to communicate well, so... I don't know. I feel like if she was going through exactly what he was going, I don't know. I can't speak for, for her and for him, but I feel like she would have already taken herself to therapy, possibly, or she might have opened up a bit more to him if this if roles are reversed, because she just seems like a communicator. But I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But that point at which she's come over from Dublin to try and get hold of him and find out what's going on, that to me, it almost made me laugh, really, because it seemed like that sort of stereotype of, men and women having an argument where the woman's really going for it saying all about splurging out all her feelings and what do you think I feel when you do this and so on and he just of course retreats completely and doesn't say a word and I just thought oh that this is just you know he's from Mars and she's from Venus kind of I, 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 language and his use of language I think Katrina, you, Katrina you've already mentioned the use of language and the style of writing I just wondered what you thought about his writing style, apart from the fact that it's in second person narrative, and how that affected your reading of the book. Oh, to me, that was everything. I'd have probably, you know, if it hadn't been for that, I don't know, you know, I'd have probably struggled. But actually, I just thought it was lovely, even if it went on a little bit too long in that middle bit. And then while we've been talking, I've been trying to find an example because I couldn't actually... It's very lyrical, but I couldn't think of anything particular. But then there's something here I found where he's he's just talking about being on the way back to South East London. You ricochet through the dark underbelly of London. And he's just got 
these turns of phrase all the time, isn't it? You peel back layers like a hand splitting the soft flesh of fruit. Yeah. Um, and it's it's kind of much more complicated than necessary for what he's saying. He's probably just on the tube, you know. <laughs> but but it, it you just sort of, you read it like a, I read it just like a poem. And so in a way, I didn't really... And again, it's like when you get to the end and, you know, the last sort of quarter or so, and you suddenly, that's when I felt myself understanding his mind and, you know, how, what a difficult life it, 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 he was revealing, how difficult it is for a young man of that age in that area, a young black man. But up till then, I was just carried along by the words, really. Yeah, I totally get that. Like, I was just looking at a passage now, and it says, And as the sun set, you whispered secrets and intimacies into the solitude of the now empty sky. She asked you, where were you? What a question, you said. You wonder what it means to know someone and whether it is possible to do so wholly. You don't think so, but perhaps in not knowing comes the knowing born of an, of an instinctive trust that you both struggle to elucidate or rationalize. It just is. It's like an elegant way mm. of saying something. And I think throughout the book, the writing was like that. When I enjoyed, I enjoyed the writing and I enjoyed, and it's interesting to say, to, 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 to it was interesting. I found out that he actually doesn't think of himself as a poet. I found it very lyrical and very poetic how he writes. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, really, really enjoyed the writing. And, and for me, that, that's part of what carried the book for me and what sort of enabled me to continue reading it. Because otherwise, without that, I think I may have really struggled to finish it. But but as you were saying, Katrina, also, it came alive in the last 30 pages. I got to the last few pages and I was like, what, you know, why was this not here before? Because I began to understand him, I began to understand why he was going through what he was going through and why he was behaving the way he was. And I, I, I'm just really sad that it was only up until then that all of those great things came to life. Anyhow. The fact that, you know, you both said lyrical and Jackie, you said, I can't remember, you used a particular, was it melodic or something? But it did, uh, no, elegant, that was it. And I thought that was such a beautiful <laughs> way of describing his writing style, elegant. There was something really elegant and poetic about his prose, the way he describes things, the turn of phrase. And I, I just really liked it. And I guess it, it really gives me a better understanding of why they were going on and on about yeah. this whole second person thing, because you're in his shoes, as it were. You're in his interior life or interior world and you're feeling what he's feeling, or you're seeing things as he's seeing them. Although they're not always entirely coherent or clear, but that's quite normal, isn't it? Where you're trying to make sense of things and sometimes your mind has moved on. You haven't really resolved the issue, but that's okay. It was melodic, the, 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 the writing, and also the fact that he's always writing about music. So it was almost musical, as Katrina was saying, lyrical and elegant, like you said, yeah, great writing. I definitely agree there. He's a great writer. And I can't wait to see what else he comes up with. Right. So I think uh, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, but I, I would like to say thank you so much for your time. Actually, before we do that, rating. I have, we haven't done a rating. Yeah. It's a book that I'd read again. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a book that I could buy and give as a gift to someone and just say, just read it and enjoy it. And it's also a book that I could use as a as a, as I am using it as like um, almost like a reference book. It opens doors to so many other creative um, people. So yeah, I really I really enjoyed it. Katrina, yeah, I I mean for all the things that I've you know we've said that we didn't like about it, I would still I I was so impressed with the language and so impressed with you know how you, you know for a first novel, I just think that it, it's very good. So I would give it a four. Cool. And how about you, Annette? Um, a three, sticking with my three, because actually the language, <laughs> the language was, as well as much as he, I, I can see that he writes beautifully in it and it's amazing for a first book, 
when you said something in there about sometimes it being unnecessarily complicated, Katrina, there was parts where it was unnecessarily complicated. It was parts of the book where I, I didn't need to. It was the mid, it was the rom the romance I put in quote unquote. It, it came alive towards the end, like you said, and that's where I would have loved to see more of that kind of language towards the end and then it finished short so yeah and also it's just okay yeah it was just okay it, I wouldn't have marketed it as a love story I think I just would have emphasized a bit more on kind of what was going on around him and how he was feeling and you know just with society as a black male in, in London those are the things that I was more invested in rather than the other parts so um just I give it a three unfortunately <laughs> Uh, I'm with you, Annette. I would also give it a three. And the reason why I would give it a three is because I found it very frustrating at the beginning and in the middle. Development of the relationship for me, it just took too long. And I felt like it was a book where nothing was happening, basically. I was reading this beautiful language, but I wasn't going anywhere. And I'm only giving it a three because I didn't really enjoy the reading experience until the end. What about the book jacket? Love, the, love, love, love the picture. I mean, you can definitely tell that he's a photographer. I don't think I can give it marks for the cover. <laughs> <laughs> also, I wanted to add, it was a chore for me. And I don't, if it's a chore for it's me, never a good I sign, I agree. Book, that's just not a good, it's not a good sign. And yeah, no, I was just like, oh, I have to read this now. And then I finished the chapter and nothing's happened. Hopefully we'll all like the next one. Yeah. Thanks guys, have a wonderful evening. And you all as well. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And finally, thank you very much for listening. If you enjoyed this or any of our other episodes, please leave us a review on App Podcasts or Spotify. And don't forget to share. Till next time. Bye-bye.